In the vast expanse of human history, few concepts have captivated the imagination and spirit as profoundly as the notion of ambassadorship, the embodiment of mediation, representation, and the essential bridge forging understanding and harmony between distinct entities. This role, intensely ingrained in the fabric of our social and political realms, finds its deepest and divine expression in the spiritual domain through Jesus Christ. Scripture reveals to us that Christ is not merely an ambassador, but the epitome of divine mediation, tasked with the sacred mission of reconciling humanity to God. Grounded in the teachings of 2 Corinthians 5.20, 21, Christ's ambassadorship unveils the heart of the Christian message. Through his life, death, resurrection, and the continuing presence of the Holy Spirit, he bridges the chasm sin has wrought between humanity and the divine. This unparalleled role Christ occupies as our intermediary is not just a testament to the depths of God's love, but a clarion call to all of humanity. It invites us into a restored relationship with our Creator, offering redemption and the promise of new life through the reconciliation achieved on the cross. Thus, the thesis of our exploration emphasizes that Christ, in His divine pre-existence, incarnate ministry, sacrificial death, and triumphant resurrection, transcends traditional notions of ambassadorship. He embodies God's ultimate message of love, reconciliation, and hope, extending an invitation into an eternal covenant with humanity. This serious truth not only forms the cornerstone of Christian faith, but also challenges us to reflect on the magnitude of Christ's role in mediating our relationship with God, promising not just reconciliation, but a transformation that echoes through eternity. First of all, the divine credentials of Christ stand unparalleled and singular in the annals of history and theology, presenting him as uniquely qualified to serve as the ultimate ambassador between humanity and the divine. At the center of Christ's qualifications is his eternal divinity and unity with the Father, a truth robustly supported by the drapery of Scripture. The Gospel of John opens with the thorough declaration, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word was God, John 1.1, 1, 1, setting the stage for the comprehension of Christ's divine nature and eternal existence. This assertion of Christ's Godhood is further affirmed in Hebrews 1, 8, where the Father addresses the Son as God, accentuating the Son's co-equality and consubstantiality with the Father. These scriptural affirmations illuminate the foundational Christian doctrine of the Trinity, wherein Christ is recognized not slightly as a divine emissary, but as God himself in the flesh. The significance of Christ's divine nature in his role as ambassador cannot be overstated, for it is this divine nature that empowers him to perfectly embody and convey God's message of love and redemption to humanity. The incarnation, God becoming flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, John 1.14, Philippians 2, 5, 8, is the miraculous act that bridges the infinite chasm between the Creator and His creation. Through the Incarnation, Christ took on human flesh, enabling Him to sympathize with our weaknesses and temptations, yet without sin. This act of condescension demonstrates God's desire to reconcile with humanity, not from a distance, but by entering into the very condition of those He seeks to save. The theological implications of the Incarnation are vast, not least because it represents the fullness of God dwelling bodily, Colossians 2, 9, making visible the invisible God and accessible the previously inaccessible. The Incarnation thus exists as the ultimate tribute to God's willingness to go to extraordinary lengths to restore the broken relationship with humanity. Also, the life and ministry of Jesus Christ provide evidence of His divine credentials. Christ's teachings, miracles, and fulfillment of prophecy not only validate his messianic identity, but also show his weighty grasp of and authority over the spiritual and physical realms. His sinless life, characterized by perfect obedience to the Father, sets a standard impossible for humanity to achieve, thereby affirming the necessity of a mediator who is both divine and human. Christ's sinlessness ensures his sufficiency as the atoning sacrifice for humanity's sins, a role prophesied and foreshadowed throughout the Old Testament and accomplished in the New. Moreover, the divine authority of Christ is asserted by his authority over life and death, 
demonstrated most emphatically through his resurrection from the dead. The resurrection is not hardly a historical event, but a theological essential that affirms Christ's victory over sin and death, validating his claims to deity and his role as the mediator of a new covenant between God and humanity. This act of divine force aids as the ultimate validation of Christ's ambassadorial authority, affording hope of eternal life to all who believe in him. In his earthly ministry, Jesus not only proclaimed the coming of God's kingdom, but embodied its presence, displaying forgiveness of sins, healing the sick, and ultimately sacrificing his life for the redemption of the world. His teachings on love, justice, and the nature of the kingdom of God have reshaped human history and continue to confront and inspire individuals to live in a manner that choose the values of this kingdom. Christ's ascension and the subsequent sending of the Holy Spirit signal the continuation of his divine mission on earth, enabling his followers to carry forward the message of reconciliation. As the advocate and comforter, the Holy Spirit enables believers to live in accordance with God's will, bearing witness to the life-changing energy of the gospel. The divine credentials of Christ, encompassing his pre-existence, incarnation, sinless life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection, highlight his unique ability to help as our mediator and ambassador. In him, the holiness of God is perfectly united with the humanity he seeks to save, extending not just a message of reconciliation, but representing it in his very person. As believers cogitate on the magnitude of Christ's divine nature and redemptive work, they are invited into a greater relationship with God, marked by gratitude, obedience, and a commitment to materializing the principles of God's kingdom in their own lives. Furthermore, at the core of the Christian faith lies the ministry of reconciliation, a divine mandate intricately woven into the fiber of the gospel message and vividly embodied in the life and mission of Jesus Christ. This ministry reveals God's profound initiative to restore a fractured creation back to himself, addressing the profound estrangement caused by sin. Humanity's fall, as narrated in Genesis, demonstrates the inception of this estrangement, plunging creation into a state of spiritual alienation from its creator. Romans 3.23 encapsulates the universal scope of this problem, declaring, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, thus necessitating divine intervention for restoration. In addition, the gravity of humanity's predicament is expounded in Ephesians 2, 1, 3, which paints a somber picture of human existence apart from God, dead in transgressions and ensnared by the course of this world. Into this bleak account, the sacrificial death of Christ emerges as the zenith of God's reconciliatory work, giving atonement for sin and bridging the chasm between the divine and the human. The cross of Christ continues as the fulcrum of history, where justice and mercy converge, uncovering the bottom of God's love and the seriousness with which he regards sin. 2 Corinthians 5.18, 19 articulates this beautifully, stating that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. The cross, therefore, is not only a historical event but a theological anchor, indicating God's unwavering engagement to reclaim his creation. It is at Calvary where the paradoxical beauty of the gospel is most vividly displayed, a place where the horror of sin and the beauty of divine grace intersect. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead further makes clear the ministry of reconciliation, supplying as the divine seal of approval on the work accomplished on the cross. It validates Christ's aspect as the Son of God, affirms the sufficiency of his sacrificial death for the atonement of sin, and heralds the inauguration of new creation. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 17, 19, definitely maintains the centrality of the resurrection to the Christian faith, arguing that without it, the believer's faith is futile, and they remain in their sins. However, the resurrection shatters the finality of death inaugurates the age to come, and guarantees the future resurrection of those who are in Christ. It is the linchpin that ensures the ministry of reconciliation is not a bare ideological concept, but a tangible reality with eternal connotations. Further, the ministry of reconciliation is not confined to the historical confines of Christ's earthly ministry, 
but extends into the present through the work of the Holy Spirit and the Church. Christ's ascension to the right hand of the Father did not feature the cessation of His reconciliatory work, but rather its continuation in a new phase. Through the Holy Spirit, Christ indwells believers, allowing them to live out the values of the kingdom of God and to participate actively in the ministry of reconciliation. The Spirit's presence ensures that the reconciliatory work of Christ is not confined to the annals of history, but is an ongoing reality in the lives of believers, enabling them to demonstrate the message of reconciliation in their communities and beyond. The Church, then, is commissioned as the ambassadorial representative of Christ on earth, entrusted with the message of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5.20. This divine mandate tests the Church to be a community where the reconciled life is not only proclaimed, but also practiced. It calls for a community that mirrors the self-sacrificial love of Christ, going beyond cultural, racial, and social divides to epitomize the unity and peace procured through the cross. The Church's partnership in the Ministry of Reconciliation is a serious testimony to the world of the transformational capacity of the Gospel and a foretaste of the coming fullness of God's Kingdom. In summary, the Ministry of Reconciliation holds as a proof to God's redemptive love and His relentless pursuit of a fallen creation. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God discloses His comprehensive plan to restore all things to Himself inviting humanity into a story of redemption that surpasses time and eternity. The ministry of reconciliation, therefore, is not simply a component of Christian doctrine, but the very heartbeat of the gospel, calling all who believe to live as ambassadors of this reconciliation, considering the hope and healing found in Christ to a world in desperate need of both. Last but not least, the ministry of reconciliation, inaugurated by Christ through his life, death, and resurrection, did not conclude with his ascension, but rather entered a new phase, indicated by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the establishment of the Church. This continuation of Christ's ambassadorial work is a thorough description of empowerment, commission, and cooperation in the divine mission to reconcile all things to himself. The ascension of Christ to the right hand of the Father conveyed not an end, but a transition to His omnipresent ministry through the Holy Spirit, who is now actively working in and through the believers to achieve God's redemptive purposes on earth. The coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost heralded a new era in the ministry of reconciliation, one where the presence and intensity of God were no longer confined to a physical temple or the person of Jesus, but were distributed among His followers the body of Christ. This Spirit, promised by Christ as the Helper and Comforter, grants believers for witness, sanctification, and service, enabling them to continue Christ's work of reconciling a broken world to God. Through the Spirit, believers are endowed with gifts and graces for the building up of the Church and the advancement of the Kingdom of God. The Spirit's indwelling presence ensures that Christ's ambassadorial mission remains vibrant and dynamic typified by signs, wonders, and the conversion of lives that bear witness to the risen Lord. Simultaneously, the Church, as the body of Christ on earth, is entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation. This is a divine mandate that compels the Church to be more than a gathering of individuals with shared beliefs. It is to be an active, living embodiment of Christ's love and reconciliation in the world. The Church's mission is acutely rooted in the Great Commission where Jesus commands his disciples to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey everything he has commanded. This mission is not solely about the expansion of a religious institution, but about the extension of God's kingdom through the metamorphosis of societies and cultures. The church, therefore, is called to be a foretaste of the coming kingdom, where the barriers that divide humanity are broken down, and where justice, peace, and righteousness prevail. This ambassadorial role of the Church involves proclaiming the message of reconciliation, not only in word, but also in deed. It tries the Church to interconnect in acts of mercy, justice, and peacemaking, contemplating the holistic nature of Christ's reconciliation that touches every aspect of human existence. The Church is to be a beacon of hope in a world marred by sin, 
granting a model of community that eclipses ethnic, economic, and social divisions through the weight of the gospel. In this way, the Church aids in Christ's ongoing work of making all things new, laboring in hope for the day when God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Besides, the Church's sharing in Christ's ambassadorial work is distinguished by a rich reliance on the Holy Spirit for guidance, wisdom, and power. The Spirit not only enables the Church for mission, but also leads it into all truth, helping it to navigate the disputes of contemporary society while remaining faithful to the gospel. This potent relationship between the Spirit and the Church ensures that Christ's ambassadorial work is not static, but responsive to the needs of the world, seeking to exemplify and enunciate the gospel in ways that are culturally relevant and transformative. Basically, Christ's continued ambassadorial work through the Spirit and the Church is a weighty mystery that epitomizes the core of the Christian mission. It is a mission that calls for bold proclamation and humble service, for unity in diversity and love that outstrips boundaries. As the Church, empowered by the Spirit, embraces its calling as Christ's ambassadors, it connects in the divine drama of reconciliation, bearing witness to the hope and healing found in the Gospel. This mission, while fraught with questions, is imbued with the promise of Christ's presence and the assurance of ultimate victory when he returns to consummate his kingdom. Until that day, the Church, guided by the Spirit, continues to labor in the vineyard of the Lord, inviting all to experience the reconciliation and peace that is found in Jesus Christ, the first and ultimate ambassador sent by God. In conclusion, in the grand dosser of Christian theology, the ministry of reconciliation, as disclosed through the life, death, resurrection, and ongoing work of Jesus Christ, remains as a flare of divine love and grace. Christ's role as the ultimate ambassador, mediating the reconciliation between humanity and God, is not merely a fundamental aspect of Christian doctrine, but the pulsating focus of the gospel message. Through his divine credentials, Christ perfectly embodies the role of mediator, bridging the chasm sin created between humanity and God. His ministry of reconciliation, displayed through the cross and validated by the resurrection, invites us into a restored relationship with our Creator, one recognized by peace, hope, and eternal life. Additionally, as this essay has investigated, Christ's ambassadorial work continues actively through the Holy Spirit and the Church, granting believers to live out and spread the reconciling message of the Gospel. The Church, as Christ's body on earth, is called to be a living testimonial to the life-changing energy of His grace, exhibiting the principles of God's kingdom and actively sharing in the ministry of reconciliation. This divine mandate confronts each believer to deliberate Christ's reconciliatory mission in their daily lives, fostering unity, peace, and love in a fractured world. In essence, the detail of reconciliation, braided through the scriptures and the life of Christ, invites us into a profound insight of God's redemptive plan for humanity. It beckons us to accept our role as ambassadors of this reconciliation, encouraged by Christ's example and empowered by His Spirit. As we ponder the extents of Christ's love and sacrifice, may we be moved to live as thoughts of His grace, extending the invitation of reconciliation to all corners of the earth until the day He returns to make all things new.